another week and another uh, selection of fragrances that I have been wearing uh, all week. So um, for you guys and gals who have just dropped in, this is a weekly uh, fragrance review. Um, I wear a new fragrance each day. I rotate them as best I can. I have about uh, I have about 32 fragrances and then I have a bunch of, of samples which I will be uh, doing as well uh, when I run out of fragrances. So 32 fragrances, rotating those each week, you run out pretty quickly. Um, but uh, these are my selection of the week and uh, Sunday was the first day I uh, wore... Nina Ricci, Le Extas, and this is um, an Oriental Floral. It was introduced in 2015, and the uh, nose behind this fragrance is none other than um, Francis Kirkshaw. So, um, Nora and I wore this on Sunday. And uh, it started off really pretty, uh, really quite sharp pepper, uh, peach pear, rose, raspberry, white flowers, jasmine, caramel, cyan, benzoin, amber, vanilla, musk, patchouli, and cedar. And uh, it started off as a nice fresh kind of peppery, fizzy kind of rose on the top. Uh, then Nora and I went out to play and about two hours later we came back inside and that's when it all kind of hit me. It started to go um, on my skin. It started to smell very, um, very, gosh, how do I say it? Like a started, it, it went off on my skin is all I can say. Um, I mean, it's a brand new bottle. I, I don't think it's, there's anything wrong with the fragrance, but uh, it didn't mix well with my chemistry. Um, I was so disappointed. Uh, it went to, it kind of went to um, a flower, like a, like a dead flower smell on me. So it had a funky smell on my skin. Um, it lasted and lasted and lasted all day. So at seven o'clock that night, uh, it was still going strong and at that point I couldn't take it anymore so I showered it off um, so that was a mega fail for me I don't think I'm even going to give it a try it's a brand new bottle so if anyone's interested or if you have it um, and you love it just let me know because it, it didn't work for me and my daughter-in-law smelt it on Sunday night and she came over to get Nora and she kind of turned her nose up at it as well so that was disappointing um, but then moving on to Monday, um, I wore um, I wore this beautiful Lalique Soleil, and guys, you know, Lalique Soleil um, was introduced was released in two thousand nineteen. Um, this is a beautiful, sparkling, fresh summer fragrance. Uh, it could be worn all year round. I've been wearing it in the winter, but I'm really looking forward to wearing it in the spring and summer. Um, it's got that uh, sweet, fruity gourmand, uh, bitter almond, gets a burst of fruit mandarin, oranges and spice, cardamom in the opening notes. And then uh, you get a candied almond, juicy pear and caramel sweetens the milk. Um, yeah, it's got that uh, candied almond, juicy pear and caramel, sweeten the milky coffee heart with a touch of delicate jasmine. Then it dries down to a proline, continues the sweetness in the dry down with the temp tempering of sensuous sandalwood and musk. Um, the bottle captures the radiance of the sun in a beautiful burst of rays and it absolutely does. It's just stunning. Um, yeah, that was my fragrance of Monday. Tuesday was um, none other than Oscar de la Rente, Della Rosa. Now, we are kind of from here on in, we're kind of on a rose theme um, because I'm really, really loving the roses right now. 
um, and Bella Rosa is no exception. It's a beautiful fragrance. It's, um, it's just a nice floral, sheepery uh, floral fragrance. Um, it was introduced, launched in 2019, and uh, the nose behind the fragrance is Harry Fremont. So I hear his name mentioned quite a bit, so he must be very, very, very good. Um, the top notes are pink pepper, freesia, modern orange, pink rose, jasmine, orris, patchouli, sandalwood, and amber. And the patchouli is blended so well in this, I absolutely adore it. And uh, Tuesday, I rocked this and I really enjoyed it uh, all day. And then on Wednesday, for the very first debut um, of a full day tryout, was Elanesia. And uh, it did not disappoint. Um, I will say that Penhaligon's fragrances are not something that when I, and I have several uh, samples of them, but they're not something that you smell first time and go, wow, that's incredible. No, your nose seems to have to get, to get used to these fragrances. And this one is definitely no exception. Um, I mean, it's, it's just, a, it's just a, a gem of a fragrance. There's a reason why Penhaligons are, are world renowned. Um, <clears throat> I've only got a 50 ml bottle. Um, I did order it on uh, Fragrance Net here in, uh, I, we can get it in Canada, but it is, I believe in the United States. And they, they do sell legitimate Penhaligons fragrances. So please people, I can't emphasize enough, when you get into a high-end fragrance, there are so many replicas and fakes out there, so uh, do be careful. Um, this was launched in 2005, <clears throat> excuse me, um, so it's an older fragrance. Uh, the top notes are violet leaf, mandarin orange, middle notes are gardenia, tuberose, jasmine, and rose. The base notes are plum and vanilla, and um, at first I could really... I kind of smelt it and it smelled a bit vintagey to me, but as the uh, dry down continued, I just became more captivated by this fragrance. And yes, if you're not a lover of gardenia or tuberose or jasmine, then this would not definitely be a fragrance that you would love. Um, it is beautiful though, and uh, yeah, and I wore that on Wednesday. So Thursday, uh, another debut was the Nina Ricci um, uh, Leastas Rose Absolu. Uh, yeah, so by the time um, Thursday came along, uh, and I had already tried the, uh, uh, the other one, the other Nina Ricci, and I was hugely disappointed in that. I don't ever wanna have to smell it again. I was really apprehensive about about trying this one so um let me just tell you i was so surprised and excited as the day went on this lasted and lasted it was a divine fragrance um it's uh it's been uh it's been or we've been told that it smells a lot like oud satin mood um, I also got on Fragrantica and someone said that it smells a lot like rose vanilla uh, man manchera, manchera or manchera. Uh, so that if you have any of those or you've smelt those, that's what this smells like. But again, I have not smelt them, so I can't, I can't contest to that. Um, when it first, when I first put this on, uh, it was like a burst of peppery roses, spicy. And um, then as, and it was, and it was gorgeous, kind of like a fresh, uh, sparkly, peppery rose. And then as the day went on and it dried down, uh, it became quite dry and smoky. So, and, and uh, resinous, quite dry, smoky and resinous. And it had that dusty, dusty smell to it. Very, um, not very oody, but, uh, has a hint of oud. This would be an introduction to oud because I'm not, I don't like oud. So this would be definitely your first introduction to oud. And as I say, I don't like oud, but you might like this. You might actually love it. This is a very niche quality fragrance in my opinion. 
Uh, this lasts forever. This is this was still on me the day after it was that good. Um, so uh, yeah, that one that one is a definite winner, and that the creator of that was of course none other than Francis Kurt John. So um, moving on to Friday. Friday, um, and you'll see two bottles and you're wondering why are there two bottles? Well, I, I ordered a, another bottle and it happened to be the, um, this one here is the Eau de Parfum and this one is the Eau de Toilette. So I put that one away because this is the one I had gone through. I've gone through a whole bottle of that already, that size. And I put it on, uh, so, I put it, so I put it on yesterday and I uh, thought, let's give that one a try because this is very strong. And I was, again, very, very pleasantly surprised that I actually fell in love with it again. Um, now, Flowers by Kenzo go back a long time. Um, I'm not sure when it was first introduced, but um, it's a... Uh, I don't know what the poppy is all about because I don't think there's a smell of poppy, but it, it says here that the power of a flower for a more beautiful world, a simple and beautiful, fragile and strong red flower, like the woman who hold it. The Eau Toilette reveals a lighter facet of the poppy fragrance. Mandarin, a bouquet of Bulgarian rose, again, we're on the rose kick, and violets are a powdery vanilla and white musk accord. Um, and then it, it uh, kind of dries down fresh, sparkling, and subtle flower fragrance. I absolutely wore it all day, and the Eau de Toilette lasted me all day, so it was wonderful. Um, so we'll say no more about that. I'm not decluttering it, but I may be decluttering the Eau de Parfum, and there's still a lot in that, guys. So, And it's a very, very nice floral fragrance. The next one is uh, Lalique by Lalique and um, I, that has a very 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 dirty jasmine. I think it's dirty jasmine that I'm smelling in it. Um, I think there's tuberose in it as well. Um, yeah it's like a, a woody fruity powdery fragrance top notes of night blooming jasmine and that's why i think the jasmine uh, smells dirty in it it's got chinese gardenia again the mix of the jasmine the gardenia and then there's iris sicilian mandarin orange you'd think that would kind of freshen it up a little bit and not make the the not make the flowers so cloying Sophisticated Rose, another rose, hint of potent exotic cloves, and I do smell that, opens the aroma with a powerful, sultry atmosphere that immediately draws attention. Middle notes of juicy white pear, ripe sweet blackberries, pink peony, ylang ylang, cassis leaf. Um, final base notes are sandalwood, vanilla, and white musk. Uh, I don't see me wearing this it's got so many notes in it it's got everything in it but the kitchen sink um and i'm just not loving it i'd like to see someone else enjoy this fragrance i think i'm going to declutter it so uh that was my week of fragrances so now we're going to go into the fun part and give them all um uh, give them all so we'll get into the fun part now and give them all awards so the first award, award is the best projection. Uh, best projection is going to go to the one I don't like, um, and it is Lalique. So he, so that's a beast. That is a total beast. So projection is definitely that one. And I'm going to give a different award to the best sillage. Best sillage is uh, the trail uh, that leaves in a room. And I'm going to give that to uh, Rose Absolute because that was stunning. And I, I could smell that everywhere I walked in the house, 
when I was outside, I could smell it and I could see that leaving quite the trail uh, behind me. Um, what was the most comforting one of all? The most comforting, um, I would say, would be uh, La Ligue Soleil. So we'll give the award to that one. The most alluring, ooh, the most alluring is got to go to Rose Absolu again. It's a very alluring fragrance. Um, it's captivating. You just want to bury your nose into that. That is very sexy. Very, very sexy. Um, most interesting, most interesting, um, most interesting, uh, I don't know. It's toss up between the Elanisa and, and this one, a Rose Absolute. So, but I'm going to give it to Elanisia. Um, I, I, yeah, I'm going to give it to Elanisia. Um, uh, most everyday fragrance here. Oh, I, I would get, I would go with uh, Oscar De La Rente. That's, that's a great everyday fragrance. Um, really it would, you know, it's more summery spring, but you could wear that any time of the year. Uh, most special occasion, most special occasion, uh, most special occasion, I'm going to give it to Elanisia. Yeah, I'm going to give it to that one, most special occasion. That's a very classy fragrance. Um, most giftable, ah, now that's a good one. None of these are going to be easy gifts, but I would go with this guy simply because of the stunning bottle and it's it's a very easy likable fragrance um blind buy an easy blind buy is going to be given to this one as well um because i blind bought this and i didn't like it so um that's probably an easy blind buy as well so um which one is the longest lasting of all this bunch. The longest lasting is definitely, definitely Rose Absolute by, by Nina Ricci. And the best bottle, da, 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 da. definitely the best bottle, hands down, Lalique Soleil. And best overall. Best overall, best overall, best overall, I'm going to give it to Rose Absolute. So um, let's see, on a rate of one to 10, um, this guy gets a nine and three quarters. This one gets a good solid eight. She definitely gets a nine. She gets a 10. She gets a six, six. This one gets, let's give her a 4.5. Sorry, sorry, Lalique, 4.5. And this one, I'm sad and sorry to say, gets a 3.5. So I'm being generous with some of these. So that is my overall experience for this week. And it was very interesting. Um, it was very, it was a really great learning experience for me. I super enjoyed it. And uh, I'm just going to give you a sneak peek of next week's fragrances. So just another, another interesting week of fragrances here that I have not used uh, since last summer, actually. Yeah, I haven't used any of these since last spring, summer. Um, now let's start with tomorrow, Sunday. Um, what am I gonna wear on Sunday? Um, okay, so let's just do it the way I have them set up and we'll start with uh, Yves Saint Laurent, uh, Paris, Paris, Paris. Uh, we'll start with that one. Then we're going, that's going to be Sunday, tomorrow. Um, and then Monday is going to be a sample of a Penhaligans. And uh, this, this fragrance is called Art. 
Artemisia, Artemisia, and we'll talk about that next week after I've tried it. I've already tried it, and I love it, but I want to give it another try before I buy a full bottle of it. And so that'll be Monday. Tuesday is going to be my cousin's favorite fragrance, and this is Oscar de la Rente. I bought a small sample of it because I wanted to smell it and remind me of her. So that's going to be um, Tuesday. Now this is one that I, this is the second bottle of it. So I have a tiny little bit left in the other bottle, but I, I leave it sitting in the bathroom. And I will never get rid of this. This is Celine Dion. This reminds me of her, um, her concert in uh, Las Vegas when we went there five years ago. And when I spray this, it takes me right back to Las Vegas in that beautiful, beautiful um, theater, uh, watching her sing and perform. So that's going to be Wednesday. Thursday, it's gonna be Sofia by Sofia Vergara. This has uh, very, very close vibes to Coco Mademoiselle. I actually like this one better. It doesn't have that sharp dry down of patchouli. Then Celine Dion is very close to my heart. Um, I have all her fragrances or I have had all her fragrances in the past and they're actually very good. Uh, this one is such a lovely, very uh, fresh, um, soapy, like just coming out of the shower type of thing. I wear this all summer long. Uh, I wear it on warm spring days. It is stunning. Um, Claire did a review on this one. She talked about it because she ordered it because of me. It wasn't for her, but she said that it was, you know, it wasn't a bad fragrance. It just wasn't her vibe. Um, but she could see that it, it wasn't, it wasn't a bad, I mean, it's a celebrity fragrance. Doesn't last a long time, but I love it. And I have a backup bottle of that one. And of course, Mademoiselle, Coco Mademoiselle needs no introduction. Um, this is my second bottle of that one as well. And I'm just not reaching for it anymore. So I thought I'll bring it out and I'll give it some love this week and then decide what I'm going to do because I do prefer to wear the Sophie, Sophia. So that's my lineup for the week, guys. And uh, I hope you watch my video next week. And um, yeah, see... Uh, see how I feel about them. I love all of these fragrances. They're all close to my heart. So um, anyway, let's uh, get this wrapped up and we will see you all on the next video. And as I always say, don't let anyone ever dull your sparkle.